fam. Peace and blessing. This is Derek Rocco Moore. And, um, you know, ever since I went in here and I reported that it was a myth that the Africans uh, that were enslaved were converted, were forcefully uh, converted to Christianity. And um, ever since I reported that that was a myth, I've had all kind of people going in here and messaging me saying, oh, you're wrong. You know, it was the good ship Jesus, this and that and the other. And um, all I can tell you to do is basically just go ahead and do your own research, okay? The whole purpose of you doing your own research is that it elevates not only your mind, but it also elevates your ancestors, okay? Now, let me go ahead and clarify. Based upon historical documents, when the Portuguese arrived on the shores of Africa, the first people they encountered were the people of the Congo and Golden Kingdom. The king at that time converted to Christianity. Later on, his son declared Christianity the official religion of the kingdom. Okay? Now, that's not a myth. And it, it, it's, you know, that's just the facts. Okay? Um, I've been to Jamestown, Virginia, and I've seen them, you've been to the museum. And or, you know, the museum in Jamestown, the museum in Williamsburg, um, I've been there. I've seen the, you know, they and I, I've described this before, but they have a rosary over there. And the rosary, instead of them having Jesus as the rosary or Jesus on the rosary or uh, or um, the Virgin Mary on the rosary, they have Queen Nzinga on the rosary. OK, so. That right there, like I said, when I saw that, that changed the whole, it, it changed the whole game. It elevated my, it elevated my mind, my consciousness, but it also elevated my ancestors. Because again, what it reveals is that the Africans that came from the Congo and Golden region, they were either familiar with Christianity or they were Christians. But the other thing that it reveals is that they had Africanized Christianity. Okay? Now, why is that so important to understand? The reason why it's important to understand and, and realize that they Africanized Christianity is that it gets rid of this whole thing of, well, you know, when you talk about conjure or the, the conjure tradition, well, why did they use the Bible? We use the Bible because you, you hear these people going here and talking about, well, use the Bible because it is part of, a, you know, this is part of the, the, the Jewish influence and, and, and all that. No, the reason why they used the Bible is because they was using the Bible in the Congo, in, in, in the Congo and Golden region. The Bible was considered to be a sacred text back in the Congo and Golden region. And when they came, when they were enslaved and brought over here, they just went in here and kept going with the tradition. So, but why? Why was the, why was the Bible? Because I've, we've gotten into this argument before, this big old debate, you know, should you use the Bible? Should you not use the Bible? Okay. Well, it makes you wonder, okay, but why were they using the Bible? What was so important about the Bible? Why is the Bible considered to be a sacred text? Why was the Bible considered to be a sacred text? Um, you know, in the Congo tradition and in Africa, in the Congo and Golden region. Well, if you understand the history, if you understand a little bit about the Congo culture, you'll start to understand and start to realize some things that there were some rituals that they saw in the Bible that were akin to the way they did things in the Congo and Golden region. And that right there is the Congo spirituality. Okay? Now, I've told you all before, and most of you, you know this, okay? I I grew up, I'm a, I'm a PK, okay? So I've been to all different churches, you know, when I was young. I used to go to all these different churches because my father was always invited to be pre, uh, to preach somewhere. And I can tell you, Every church does not stand 
Every church, when they do their baptism, their full body baptism, every church does not have a preacher or minister that stands outside the baptismal pool holding their hands up like they're part in the Red Sea. Not all churches do that, okay? There's only a few churches that do that, and that's because it's part of their tradition. And where did that tradition come from? That tradition didn't come from just reading the Bible. That tradition came from understanding when, when our ancestors in the Congo went ahead and they saw that, they understood that story, they went ahead and they looked at it and said, that's working Simbi spirits. But see, you, you won't find this in a book. You're not going to find that kind of stuff in a book. And the reason why is because no one is investigating it. No one is researching it. Because most people want to go in here whenever they talk about conjure, whenever they talk about the tradition, they always want to they want to focus on the magical aspect of it. Okay? Which if you grew up in the culture, you know that they call that the secular aspect of it. Okay? That's the secular thing. All right? That's that secular living. That's secular life. That's secular life. Okay? The reason why the Bible is so important in our in, in our culture is because it a lot of the rituals and everything they have already been ritualized, they've been Africanized, they've been syncretized with the culture. That's the reason why it's so difficult for a lot of people to go ahead and break out of Christianity because it's so tied to the culture. That, but they don't understand the theology behind it. They don't understand the psychology behind any of it. And that's the reason why it's so difficult for them to break away from it. Okay? You have to go in here and you, you, you need your ancestor support in order for you to go in here and break this tradition. To break these chains. you got to elevate your ancestors. And until we elevate our ancestors, until that happens... Until you elevate your ancestors, you will still go ahead and be stuck in the same mode of thinking. You'll still be sitting up here stuck in the same thinking or the same, uh, uh, you know, same lifestyle of thinking or the same belief, I should say, of the that that we was forced into Christianity. You know that, and and, and the whole understanding, the whole idea behind that. Once you go, you know, if you don't understand it now. The whole idea of saying someone force you into that is basically validating your enslavement. But once you start to understand that our ancestors had a role in this, our ancestors chose this for a particular reason, it starts to go ahead and you can clear up and, and you can clear up a lot of that confusion and and make changes because then you can go ahead and help them to understand that, hey, I understand why you did this. It's not necessary now. Okay. This is the reason why we are adopting, you know, I adopted the, the comedic theology after I explained to my ancestors, hey, this is what was going on. This is why, you know, this is why we can't go no further. Once I explained that to them and they saw this, they were on board with the whole comedic theology. But if you're struggling on trying to go in here and make some changes and you keep coming back to the same thing, it's, it's them, okay? It's because your, your ancestors, they stuck. Their spirit is literally stuck in that astral plane still waiting for somebody to go in here and to save them. And the only way to get out of that, the only way is for them to go in here and realize they got to save themselves. But it, it's a partnership that they have to work with you. If you got any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to drop me a line. Until next time, head to poof. Peace.